Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the 16 essential works of classical music for a record collector in 1953. Now, why 1953? Well, you know, as a critic, I don't think you can really set yourself up as a critic without being, being something of a historian, without being a student of the profession. And I came across this little book in my in my searches through the classical universe, How to Build a Record Library. It's by Howard Taubman, who was the head music critic for the New York Times. And he published this in 1953. It's very interesting. And we're going to go through this book. We're going to take this bit by bit because I just think this is beyond interesting. And you will too, if you're a collector, because he goes through this nice little book, chapter by chapter, what you should do um, there's chapter one, which is aims and approach, which we'll consider separately in a bit. Orchestral music, opera, choral music, chamber music, keyboard music, vocal music, operettas and musical comedy. I think that's wonderful. There's a chapter on that. Jazz. And then something called Off the Beaten Path. And you're just going to want to know what recordings were available for all of this stuff in 1953 and what Mr. Taubman and his associate Harold Schoenberg, who we all know from later, um, what they selected. But in the meantime, if you're starting out, if you're starting out under the orchestral section here, um, they say some very interesting things. And one of them is, <clears throat> let us assume you are just starting to build your orchestral library. Even the carefully selected lists below, which are far from comprising the entire gamut of great orchestral music, may impose too great a burden of selection on you. Here, then, is a, a suggested nucleus for an orchestral collection, 16 records with which you cannot possibly go wrong, though another 16 selected from the full list might be equally rewarding. So here's a selection from the full list, their essential 16 list. And I, I think this is this is just marvelous. So you ready? Here they are, and they're just they're just in a list here. So I'm just going to read them off, um, slowly, so that you can you know soak it all in. Bach's Suite Number Two. That's all he says about it. the orchestral suite number two, Beethoven's Third Symphony, and Emperor Concerto, Brahms's Third Symphony. Interesting that they chose that one, isn't it? I mean, we all know it's Brahms's greatest symphony, or the one that gets played the least. So they're not they're not gilding the lily here. Dvorak's Symphony Number no. Five, New World. Well, we now know that it's really Symphony Number no. Nine, but in 1953 they only knew five. <laughs> this was the fifth of them. Um, the others weren't published until much later. Um, later on, in, I think in that decade, actually, we finally got the correct ordering of the Dvorak symphonies and put them in the right, um, in the right sequence. But there you go. Uh, the New World was number five in 1953. Handel's Water Music, <clears throat> Haydn's Surprise Symphony, Mendelssohn's Italian Symphony, Mozart's G Minor Symphony, Kershaw 550, since there are two Mozart symphonies in G minor, but nobody cared about the other one in 1953. Um, and D minor piano concerto, that's number 20, in case you're curious. Schubert symphony number no. nine, which is the great. Now, of course, it's symphony number no. eight or symphony number no. seven or something. That's gotten, that's gotten more confusing and more messed up than it was in 1953. Uh, Schumann's piano concerto. Sibelius's Symphony No. 2, Tchaikovsky's Symphony No. 6, The Patetique, Stravinsky's Firebird Suite, and Wagner's Siegfried Idol. There you go. And he, he continues. Let's, let's continue with what he says here. It's just very interesting. It would have been possible to set up separate sections for such different classifications as symphonies, suites, tone poems, and concertos, but they are all part of the orchestral liter literature as it is presented in the concert hall, and they have been brought together here for purposes of convenience. To all intents and purposes, they are the standard repertoire, the backbone of our orchestral life today, and it does not appear that the list will change very much for many years. 
That was a very astute observation because we can all attest the list has not changed very much since 1953, even though you could pick a different 16. But this was a very, very interesting 16. And so this little chat is kind of a warm up for the, the Lollapalooza, where we're going to take this section by section because I just am fascinated by what was available and what they recommended. And uh, in 1953, think about it. The 78 era was coming to a close. LPs were starting to be invented, but they hadn't quite arrived yet. In mass market, things were being issued in multiple media. Um, stereo was on the horizon, but hadn't arrived yet and wouldn't for another five years or so, four years, something like that. Really very, very interesting time. And it was a time when, according to these folks, there were so many recordings available. Ah, uh, they should only have known, right? What we know now. Oh my God. So, so let's, let's, let's look forward to this and enjoy this list of the 16 essential orchestral works um, that a record collector in 1953 should want to start their collections and get hopping on the journey in which we are now, you know, well, there it is. We're all drowning in stuff. And these days they thought they were drowning in stuff too, but it was a lot less. It was a much shallower pool they were drowning in. I granted you can drown in like two inches of water. Well, okay, so here's the two inches. I mean, this is the little, little tiny book, adorable little book, like it's falling apart because you couldn't get it new. But I'm going to be very happy to go through it with you. And I hope you will join me on this little journey of nostalgia for what was available to record collectors back in the day. Um, fascinating historical stuff. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.